Hi everyone, my name is Moni. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we're going to be previewing a game that is currently on Kickstarter called Ice. This was published by This Way and designed by two different designers, Samson Pere and Hugo Fryermuth. And it is a game in which we're going to be exploring this ice landscape, <laughs> digging deep to try to find different artifacts. Yes, and the board state actually resembles that. Mm -hmm. It is a very different kind of tiled out board, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so today we're going to be doing a general overview of how the game is played. Before we begin though, we do want to mention that this is a prototype copy of the game, which means things are subject to change in the final copy. But if you'd like to learn more about their campaign, as well as any other Kickstarter details, we're going to leave a link to the Kickstarter down below. And if you can all do us a big favor and turn on your Klingon subtitles, just in case we need to make any corrections, we can add those there. If we do find out about those, we will add them to the description as well. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. And without further ado, we are going to get started. So if you please direct your attention to the set of the table, we're all set up here for technically a two-player game of ice. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, there is a lot of ice many, on many this ice board. Pieces, yes. This is a very different kind of board here. Mm -hmm. It is made up of a lot of different uh, white tiles that represent a large ice sheet. Yes. And underneath it are several layers of tiles that are the, the artifacts and all these other stuff that we're going to be uncovering throughout the game. Right. We each also have our own individual player boards that have uh, different special abilities. And around us, we have some different types of objective cards that are going to score us points. And so in this game, players play as different expedition leaders who are going around and trying to uncover artifacts underneath the ice by mm. excavating. Players will earn points by collecting these artifacts and scoring their different uh, request cards, mm. as well as the three decree cards at the end of the game. And at the end of maximum eight days, whoever has the most points wins. And so like we were mentioning, each player has their own character guild board, and this is going to hold all the artifact tiles that we collect. It's also going to keep track of the action points that we have to spend in a round, and it's also an asymmetric player ability technically. And mm -hmm. so I am the leader of the Incandescents. Yes, and I have the Cryo Architects. And we also start the game with our expedition leader as well as a camp off the main board. And so the game is split up into several days, and each round represents one day. Right. And so at the start of each round, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to flip over the top of the event event card deck. And so for the first round, we start with the first card already flipped over, which is Arrival, and that tells us to place one meeple on each of the tunnel tiles and place an encampment on the camp tile. Now our copy of the game does not have a camp tile on it, so this is where the starting encampment is, but we've already populated all of the tunnel tiles with these uh, meeples. Then starting with the start player, each player takes a turn spending up to three action points per turn taking actions. And once everybody's out of actions, then the round ends. And so at the start of each round, each player gets five action points to spend. And so we mark that here on our character guild board. And these points can be spent doing one of five different actions. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to briefly talk about each one. The first thing you can do is you can spend one action point to build a camp. And so camps are nice because they're a way for us to kind of recall our workers or move more of these archaeologists to specific tiles onto the board. Mm -hmm. Taking this action allows you to place your camp anywhere in the top level of the board, as long as it's at least three spaces away from a different camp. And so then I would place out my camp as well as my expedition leader onto the same tile. The next action a player can take is called calling, which costs one action point. Basically what this is, is you can take your expedition leader and move them to a site of a camp, whether they're on the board or off the board, or you can call and bring in one archaeologist to a campsite. Yes, and keep in mind that these camps don't belong to anybody. Mm -hmm. So I could take a call action to move my expedition leader to a different camp if I needed to. And so that is a nice way to kind of gain more mobility on the board. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is true for the archaeologists. They do also do not belong to any one player. And so one of the reasons why you may want to call an archaeologist to a tile where you have an expedition leader is for when you're taking the move action, which also costs one action point uh, per movement. And this action allows you to move your expedition leader to an adjacent tile. And you can bring up to three archeologists that are on the starting tile with you. Mm -hmm. So if Naveen were to take this action, he can move to, let's say this spot over here, bringing this archeologist with him. And with this move action, you're actually allowed to move up to three tiles, but for each tile you move, it's one AP. Mm -hmm. So in this case, moving from the camp here was one. If I want to move from here to here, that's two. 
And so those are the three basic actions to kind of get you to navigate around the different parts of the board. Because what you're gonna wanna be doing is excavating, and that is the next type of action. So excavating is what allows you to actually dig deep in this, this ice sheet and start you know, opening up layers of the ice. Mm -hmm. And so this action costs three action points, but you get a discount for each archeologist on the tile as well as your expedition leader. And so the rules for excavating is that, first of all, your expedition leader must be on the tile that you're gonna be excavating, mm -hmm. and it cannot be covered by more than one tile. Since this is the surface level of the entire thing, we don't have an issue with that. Right. So we are we're good to go in uh, excavating that tile. And so in order to do this, we would remove the tile from the board, revealing the three tiles that are underneath it. And then we must place the two archaeologists as well as our, our expedition leader on the next level of tiles here, distributing them evenly amongst the ones that you revealed. As we dig deeper and deeper, we're going to be finding artifacts. But for this whole first level, all of these ice sheet tiles contain a free ability that you'll be able to use on a future turn as a free action. And so if you excavate one of these ice sheet tiles, you, you keep it face down in your hand to be saved for later use. Now say for example, if the board looked like this on a future turn, Orange can technically excavate this tile because the rule is you can't have more than one tile covering it. And so there's only one tile covering this tile. Right, exactly. So as evidenced by this. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so in order to excavate this tile, this would cost three action points minus one for the exhibition leader, which is two action points, uh -huh. plus one because it is currently covered by a tile. Exactly, yep. That's back to a total of three action points to do this. And in this case, this ice sheet tile would be removed from the game. Orange would not be able to take it uh, into their hand in order to use on a later turn. And then they would take their actual tile that they truly excavated, which is this one. And so these tiles all have different uh, artifacts on them. Some show active artifacts and some inactive, and mm -hmm. that's important for when you go to score them for points. These artifacts are then placed on your player board in the corresponding stack. And so there's a symbol uh, for each type. And so as you can see, there are five different types of artifacts that you'll be able to find hidden in this ice. There's also technically a sixth type of artifact called the prismatic artifacts, and those are considered wild. Right. And so one of the main reasons why we are going to be collecting these artifacts is in order to score these request cards. So each player starts the game with two of them that are private, yep. as well as six of them face up at any given time that are considered like public scoring objectives, I suppose. At the end of each day, each player is going to be able to score one of them. But in order to score them, you must first validate them by finding the appropriate artifact and placing it on the card. And so as you can see, these different request cards show what type of artifact you need to place here in order to score that card. The other significance to these artifact tiles is that each of these different types give players a specific ability. For example, the achievement artifacts give players one additional action point to start their day. The philosopher's artifacts allows you to collect a tile that collapses during your turn, and so that is something that occurs when a tile only has one adjacent tile of the same level. So take, for example, this tile. If it were only connected like this, then this tile would technically collapse. The tent would leave the board and technically any collapsed tiles go out of the game. Nobody gets to, to use these benefits. Mm -hmm. But if you had that artifact ability unlocked, then you would get to claim the tile. Right. And so those are just a couple examples of the five. Mm -hmm. But in order for you to activate these, you have to have at least one active artifact in its stack or two inactive artifacts or one inactive and one prismatic artifact. So again, prismatic is that wild artifact. Mm -hmm. As long as that's true, then you have access to those abilities. The fifth and final action that you can take is just taking one of these tokens for one action point. And these basically allow you to bank an action point for the next day, allowing mm -hmm. you to start your day with six action points instead of five. Mm -hmm. Once you can no longer take actions, then the day ends for you, and you can choose up to three artifacts that are on your guild board to essentially score. Mm -hmm. For each artifact, you can decide whether to use it to validate a request card or to just put it out in front of you off of your board in order to score points at the end of the game because any of these artifact tiles that are left on your board at the end of the game are going to score you zero points. Mm -hmm. I do want to mention though that you can only validate one request card per day, so only one out of the three you choose are going to be able to be used for that reason. So in this example, maybe I'll choose to use this inactive red artifact in order to validate the request card that's in my hand, because this card says when you remove a tile from the board, you can put it directly on this card, and it's going to give me one point for each tile on this card at the end of the game. So that might be something nice to kind of uh, just have as the game progresses. Mm -hmm. And so I would put this tile here, which means now I'll be able to score this card at the end of the game. But now this, this tile 
is not going to score any other points for me. Right. In addition, I do have these two other tiles that are both the inactive forms of their artifacts. So if I wanted to, I could put them both off to the side to score one point each yep. at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. If they were the active forms, then they would score me two points each. Once everyone's completed their day, then you refill the request cards and then you draw the next event card. And you start the next day. Mm -hmm. And so there are two ways that this game can end. The first way is by completing the eighth day, yep. right? So this is going to be a maximum of eight days. Or if you completely uncover one of the tiles that are at the very bottom of this whole board yes, it's called like a... the edifice tile. Exactly. And it'll take a lot of digging, but edifice tiles look like this. Then players can each take one final turn, spending up to three action points, and then you go into end game scoring. And you essentially count up your points that you earn for all of your request cards, mm -hmm. as well as any points earned from any of these three decree cards and artifact tokens scored throughout the game. Yep. And whoever has the most points at that point wins. As you can see, there's a lot of moving parts. It is a very different board from what we're mm -hmm. used to, but that is essentially how it's played. If you have any questions about this game or anything about the campaign, please feel free to leave a question down below and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. We will leave links in the description if you are interested in this game. Feel free to click those and check those out. Well, thank you all so much for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.